Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this privilege, for this time to yeah. lift up your word. Yeah. I pray that tonight, as we do lift up your word, that we will focus on your glory above all else, that we will put our pride aside, and our egos aside, and, and I pray that you will fill us with your spirit, Lord, and yeah. empower us for this service and for this ministry. Yeah. And I just pray that this will be a time where you, your name will be lifted high and greatly, greatly, greatly yeah. glorified yeah. through us. of your time tonight. My name is Dan and my friends and I are out here to share the Word of God with you here on this Halloween weekend. Everywhere you look, you see sin and depravity. It's amazing to me that most don't realize what's happening. And when I bring it up, people seem to get mad at me. They cover up their ears to keep their world from shattering. It's a tragedy. Humanity is dead in sin. And it's sad to see the casualties of wretched men who never realize the fact that there's more to life than getting a job, a wife, and a course to drive. If you're alive, your job, glorify God. The more that you rob his glory, then the more it'll cost you're gonna pay. Even though you thought you'd never get caught. When the day of judgment comes and you stand before God All humanity is enslaved to sin But Jesus came to set us free and give grace to men So repent today and put your trust in Him Or in the end you'll experience what justice is The uprising, the truth will set you free I'm a living proof of grace and I've been redeemed The uprising, this world is fast asleep And we need to wake them up from God's wrath to flee Repent, turn from sin And put all of your trust and hope for salvation in Jesus Christ because he is your only hope. He's the only hope for any of us to be saved from the wrath of God and from hell. We all have lied. We all have stolen. We all have used God's name in vain. And the Bible says, it's all liars have their part in the lake of fire. That all blasphemers will not be held guiltless on the day of judgment. No thief will inherit the kingdom of God. My question for you tonight is where do you stand before the eyes of the Lord? Many people will tell us when we talk to them that it's okay. God knows my heart. I'll be fine when I stand before him. And you're right. God does know your heart and that's not a good thing every wicked thought that has ever gone through your mind every secret sin everything that you can remember God knows and we will be judged by that you may say we've never done anything serious I've never killed anyone but the Bible says anyone who hates his brother is a murderer and no murderer has eternal life in him and the Bible says if you sin one time you're accountable for all of God's law and you'll stand before a thrice holy God on the day of judgment to give an account of every thought, word, and deed. Every one of us is guilty of judgment in hell because even the smallest sin is infinitely sinful against an infinitely holy and perfect God. When you're judged on the day of judgment and you're weighed on the balance and found wanting, what will you do? Our sins must be atoned for. They must be paid for. And there are two choices, folks. The first choice is to pay that fine yourself, and that will be an eternity in hell. The second is this. Repent of your sins and trust in Christ alone. Because you've broken God's law, you're under the curse of the law. But Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse himself. For cursed is he who was hanged on a tree. When Jesus Christ was on that cross, he was not only suffering from nails through hands and feet, but from God's wrath. God's anger and hatred towards sin was poured out on Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, so it did not have to be poured out on us. And the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus the Lord. But he did more than die. As he had predicted, he rose three days later. Jesus Christ is alive. He proved his power over death. He proved who he was. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. As our advocate. He is our lawyer. And if we have repented and trusted in Jesus Christ alone, then on the day of judgment, when we stand before the great white throne, he will not see our sin, but he will see Christ's righteousness laid to our account. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. He will change you. He will change who you are. Being born again is not a cute Christian cliche. It's a reality. He will make you a new creature. 
Father. He will take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God will come and live in you. His Holy Spirit will empower you and He will change who you are. He will change your desires so you will not desire your sin. You will desire only to give Him glory. Come to Christ and live. Jesus said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will no wise cast out. Come to the bread of life, Jesus Christ. You come to him, and you will never hunger. You will never thirst. For he is the bread of life. He is the living water. And he is your only hope. And he is hope enough. Jesus is saving us from it. Jesus is saving you from the, the, the wrath of his father that you burned by violating God's law. The Trinity, he's saving us from himself. He must judge you and do it righteously. You may not like it, sir, but God is what he is. He is righteous, he is holy, and he is just. And he will justly judge you, sir. And you will pay, you will pay for your sins, sir. You don't have to, though. Either you pay for them or Christ pays for them. You decide, sir. But know that on the day of your judgment, if you're still in rebellion, that you will be reminded of days like this when someone shared the gospel friends. with you that you might be forgiven, sir. But folks, the fact is that according to the Bible, once you die, you will not be able to repent at that time. Your fate will be sealed when you die as this man in open rebellion against God. We don't care if you mocked us because we know that if we were not representing Christ, men like this wouldn't be acting the fool. But the fact is, he hates Christ. He hates Jesus Christ. Hate Christ. Christ. And, and so I he mocks God. us because he hates I God. Hate he wants to die in his sins. And he doesn't care. He loves his sins so much that he'll cling with them and to this woman. And he will cling to them together. And he will go all the way to, to the wrath of God to have to pay the price for his sins. Folks, you don't have to go the route of this man. You can have your sins paid for you. God is so good that even though we've broken God's law, even though we deserve God's wrath, even though it's just for him to punish us in hell, God has said it's not an amazing thing that you would not have to pay that price. Jesus died, sir, so that you could either be saved by him and spend eternity in heaven or mock him, sir, and accept hell. No one goes to hell unless it is their free will to do so. Mock him. Mock him, sir. This will all be things that you will have to answer for. God knows your most intimate thoughts. He knows the most intimate desires of your heart. And he has promised that he will call you to account for every idle thought. You too, ma'am. Absolutely. Sir, have you ever told a lie? Uh, yes. What does that make you? A liar. A liar. You ever steal anything that didn't belong to you? Yes. What does that make you? Internet. That's a lie of stealing. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. What does that make you, sir? A thief. Okay, have you ever misused the name of God? You Jesus, right now I just did it. You just blasphemed him in front I of me, yes, sir. Yes. So, have you, have you ever had sex outside of wedlock? Yeah, with her. Guess what? Outside of marriage. If you die and stand before God, he will not see you as a good man. He will see I like you as girl. a liar. I like you. Blasphemous and don't your heart, sir. You are on your way to hell. So I, you know what? Even, even though you're trying to be a jerk to me, the fact is, I don't want to see you in hell. I don't want to see you in hell. Because I know what's happening. You, so if you walk across the street, so and if I watch you get run over by a car, I'm going to know what your fate was because you died blaspheming God. And like it a, doesn't have to be that way. That you like can't out sin God. Christ. You can't out sin But he him. loves you, he right? He will forgive you if you will put down your <laughs> war against him and repent. He'll send you to hell, but he you loves you. You realize how proud you are, sir. Do you realize that you think proud. you're sitting in judgment of God? I'm you're thinking that you sit in a position to tell God what's right and what's not. Sir, you are an admitted criminal, sir, and God knows it all. He knows every sin, even the ones you think are secret, sir, and he will call them and will all be exposed one day, and you'll be judged for it. Gonna be judged. It's going to be terrible, sir. Please don't live in rebellion against God. He's a good God. We're not here because we want to be mean to you. We're here because we are guilty sinners deserving of hell who've been saved by a good God. The fact is that you are rebelling against God when you lie, when you steal, when you lust after someone. The fact is each of those is as much a rebellion as the cartoonish rebellion of this man. But it doesn't have to end that way for you. You do not have to die in your sins. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. No one knows the day they'll die. It could be today. It might be a long time from now. But the Bible says if you hear the gospel and you reject it, that you harden your own heart. And there will come a day when you can't turn to Christ any longer. Please, folks, hear what I'm saying and consider it. Consider how you've lived. Consider your sins against the holy God. You want to go have a Consider beer? that God has blessed you with good things all your days. Your family, children, 
your loved ones. God is good, God is kind. And the fact that he has not struck you dead when you sinned against him shows that he is giving you mercy. He's giving you yet another opportunity to repent. Please don't turn your back on this. Please don't reject this amazing salvation that came at such so great a price. Christ saved me. He saved my brothers and he can save you. He can save all of you and he will save any of you who will repent and Brother trust himself. in Jesus alone. Now there is a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. These are the words of God.